So one thing that's been a, a hot topic the last few days, especially in the central Midwest, would be bugs. And the first one would be the alfalfa weevils. Now, I'm catching you guys in June with this presentation. Some of you have already went through the worst of it. Most of you probably have. In Kansas, for example, I help work on a bunch of acres in Kansas. Maybe you're in Oklahoma, further south, where we get growing degree units quicker. The, aphid, the, the weevils are going to become a bigger problem sooner. So we're going to talk a little bit today about these two common insects, alfalfa weevils and potato leafhoppers, and why and kind of how we do that. So first thing we need to do is identify an alfalfa weevil. So we have different things out there that can destroy an alfalfa crop, right? And, and a little bit of this is kind of facetious, but you kind of play along with me just a little bit. So what's an alfalfa weevil out there? Well, that's not it. We know that for sure. We know that's not a weevil. That's not a weevil as well. So basically what we have in the top left corner is the adult alfalfa weevil. We'll go through this identification a little bit. We have the larvae off to the top right. We have what the cocoon looks like after that larvae uh, goes to pupate to become an adult. And then you have a little snapshot of the eggs there. So I had these pictures sent to me just this week. The weevil has been a big deal, like, like I said. There's been a lot of stressful moments in Nebraska, South Dakota, Western Minnesota, Iowa, and maybe some other areas. A Snapchat that was sent to me as they swept for weevils in some alfalfa fields. You can see there's a lot of little green bugs in there. They are hungry. Picture to the right is a guy that had sprayed his field, felt pretty good. Went and checked the neighbors. Folks, we have yield loss there. We have forage quality loss, and we can't afford to do any of that, especially when hay prices could be a little high. Drought is in effect in many areas. Soybean meal is high. We need to put as much crude protein on the farm as we can and raise it ourselves. So let's pay attention to these kind of things, and we'll, we'll hit some highlights on weevils here. So the life cycle. First of all, some eggs can be laid in the fall, and actually a lot of eggs are laid in the fall. Once the temperatures start to get cool, this adult weevil that you see here on the left comes out, goes into your alfalfa field. She's gonna, she's gonna lay eggs in those hollow stems and the residue that's still left in your field so they can overwinter and hatch in the spring. So we have fall laid eggs. Springtime comes around. We can still lay eggs in the spring as well and that's very common too so these adult weevils are going to hang out in the alfalfa crowns in the grass around the alfalfa crop so they're going to overwinter as well so both are going to live the eggs are going to live in a stem over the winter we can have more eggs implanted in those stems in the spring and we have adults around the adults are not really that aggressive on alfalfa most of the time you don't see much adult feeding, mostly from the larvae. So again, adults over winter, spring activity starts usually April, sometimes early May. It depends on which part of the country you're in. The adults are gonna lay those eggs in those stems, two to 25 per cluster, up to 500 per female, so they can lay quite a few eggs. Okay, so fall laid eggs. They're gonna start to hatch when we get about 300 growing degree units. So I have people in the South that might have to make two, sometimes even three applications of insecticide on an alfalfa crop to get through the first cutting without significant damages. You know who you are, the farther South you are, the more you have to pay attention. I would say this year we had weevil activity in early April in Kansas for sure. I was on the Nebraska-Kansas border April 1st, had enough weevil damage there to, to trigger spraying. Farther south you go, you might have sprayed even uh, closer towards March 1st, or excuse me, April, yeah, April 1st, last week of March. So just pay attention to that. The big thing, like we said before, get out, scout those fields, know what's going on. The second hats are gonna start coming on about 575 growing degree units. Depending on where you're at, you can get a warm up early, get the first hatch to come on, then it could get cool. It might delay the second hatch. It might actually delay the first hatch. 
it all depends on how the spring warms up as to when we really need to be actively out there. But I would say as soon as that alfalfa gets broke dormancy and you get six or eight inches of growth, you need to be out there checking that field on a weekly basis for sure. So you can manage what's going on and you don't have to be so reactive when you have a disaster. So let's identify this little uh, alfalfa weevil larvae. So you can see in this photo to the bottom right, we have a little worm with a black head, a prominent white stripe down the middle of his back, and he'll have two little white stripes that girdle each side coming down. So he'll actually have three stripes, two of them lighter and on the sides, one down the middle and a black head. As we showed that picture earlier that had the other worm in there that I had that said it was not a weevil, that had a brown head, a little different color to it, and not the same stripe pattern. So that was a clover worm, and this is a alfalfa weevil. So let's go on a little bit. So once we get down, we the larvae, they feed for three to four weeks. Then they spin this little cocoon. If you're out checking your fields and you find these little cocoons down around the base of the plant, and maybe some up in the canopy a little bit, most of it's going to be down on the ground you know that you are kind of through that heavy feeding stage, but keep an eye out, depending on if you're on the first hatch or the second hatch. It could be a prolonged month and a half, two month ordeal. So just pay attention, the wheels are a big deal. I just need to get through this and show you a few things here so you can see what the damage looks like. Here's a quick snapshot of the life cycle. And I grabbed this from a Indiana extension publication. Again, you have overwintering adults. The adults are kind of dormant during the summer. They go to the field borders out, hang out in the grass, the trash, the residue. And then again in the fall, they start laying eggs again. They lay eggs in the spring, they lay, lay eggs in the fall. The larvae come out in the spring. That's when all this, when the pupa and the, the larvae are, excuse me, the, the larvae are the feeders, the pupa is when they're changing into their adult form. Just be aware. Um, again, what's this guy up to? Is he lost? Yeah, this was my intern a few years ago. Sometimes he had trouble finding the right place, but he's actually looking for damage. He's out there trying to find out what's going on to help manage expectations. So what are we going to do here? First, we can use a sweep net to detect him, go sweep the canopy, bring back 10 to 20 sweeps, look in there, see what you find. This is a few from a sweep that I did a few years ago. Again, different stages of larvae. You've got some very big larvae up here. You've got a small one down over here in the middle that's basically just come, just hatched out of an egg. So you'll find multiple levels. That'll give you an idea of how long the feeding's gonna last. So you have to protect those fields. Go pick some plants. Take yourself 15 to 20 plants, pick them off at the base, go shake them in a white pail so you can see the worms in the bottom of the pail or the larvae and do a little bit of a count. This is a very busy slide. If you need to come back to this, please just pause on this screen, take a little count. It gives you a plant height, a cost per alfalfa scenario, and a spraying recommendation. I'm one of those guys, I don't like to see damage, I don't like to see yield loss, and I don't like to see quality loss. So I'm out there probably looking in, in this range where I, I I like to spray weevils to get them cleaned out of the field. Just, it's such a great protection method. And at the same time, you could put micronutrients in there, you could put a fungicide in there, different things you can do to enhance your yield, all at the same time while taking care of these insects. And that's relatively inexpensive to do today from an insecticide control standpoint. Now, if you are in an organic situation where you did not apply insecticides, there's a whole different realm that you have to deal with out there. And that's a whole different story for another day. Another table taken from the University of North Dakota. So there's stuff out there to use for guides. And, and I can help you walk through that too. I've done it so many years. I take my sweep net. I look at the plants. I get this gut feel. And we pull the trigger, yes, or we wait, we cut, and then we treat later. So there's different ways to manage it. So look for physical damage. What you're going to look for is shot holing in those newer developed leaves and buds towards the top of the plant. That's where they really like to feed. And you can see in this picture, that particular bud right there, you can see one, two, three, four, five. 
I could see a minimum of five weevil larvae on one particular stem in the top of that stem. So be paying attention. That's what the feeding looks like up front. You know, the, the picture to the left is a little bit more severe. The picture to the right, they're just kind of getting started. But ladies and gentlemen, that's what happens. And when we have heavy feeding, the fields will turn white because all you have left is the skeleton of those leaves. So if you're driving down the road, and hopefully you don't see your own field look like this, but everybody has a neighbor that's done this. That field turns white, you have had a devastating weevil problem. Probably lost over 50% of your forage quality probably anywhere between 25 and 30 percent of your yield is gone and they don't eat the bad stuff they eat all the good stuff the leaves is what you want to get back to the bunk and that's what they go after so let's protect those leaves the next thing so let's talk about a couple different things now now that i've got to this slide so generally speaking in my experience of 15 years scouting for weevils if you are interstate 70 or south you might have to spray twice if you're at interstate 80 you're gonna have to spray once most likely to take care of weevil feeding interstate 90 i would say if you're south of 90 you're probably gonna have to spray if you get north of interstate 90 you might be able to get through the first cut and have to treat right after the crop comes off the big thing, folks, is get out there, scout those fields, know what was in that crop before you cut if you did not spray ahead of time. If you have weevils in the field and they're kind of at that mediocre level, expect to spray as soon as the crop comes up. And I mean, if you're chopping haylage, as soon as that last truck leaves the field, get a sprayer out there because we need to take care of those weevils as quick as we can. And don't spray at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in the heat of the day Try to go later in the evening or first thing right away in the morning when those bugs could be more towards the surface because they're going to be down in the residue, the trash, soil crack. They don't like to bask in the sun. So during the day, they're going to protect themselves a little bit. The best efficacy will be first thing in the morning or later in the evening when it gets cooler and they might be out actively feeding on buds towards the soil surface. So Okay, so I just mentioned silage. If you're doing baled hay, get the bales off the field. As soon as the baler's done, get out there and spray the field. Because here's what happens. We take our swather and we pull all that stuff into a swath or a windrow and the bugs come with it. Well, when that hay starts to dry, they drop to the ground and they find a nice cool place to hide out in the trash, the residue, the dirt, and they stay there. Then once the hay is removed, there's nothing to eat but those little bitty buds that we want to regrow to become our next crop. So we have to take care of those things as soon as possible. Classic case. Windrow gets made, hay gets taken off, get stripes out there. Well, it's just not regrowing in these areas. Well, that's where we put all the buds. So go out there, make an application, go fishing for three days. It's kind of like this. As you call the doctor and they say, you're fine, just take an aspirin and call me in three days. I'm going to say, you're fine. Just spray for weevils. Call me in three days. Matter of fact, I've never had a return phone call because I think it works damn near every time. So let's, let's take care of those things, get those applications made. Again, we're going to check those crowns and debris. It might be against the rules, but once in a while, we got to find out to make sure that's really what's going on out there. But get down on your hands and knees, dig around. You might need a pocket knife or a little tool to dig scratch around those crowns you can find those little cocoons we talked about when they start to pupate those little cocoons find out if you have cocoons today you're getting close to the end or if they're going to still be actively feeding so again in short let's identify those alfalfa weevils let's know what they look like we've got the adult the larvae uh we know that this guy is a clover, an alfalfa clover worm, so it doesn't count. Well, they eat a little bit, but not much. They're not as hungry as a weevil. You get the feeding down here, and then again, that nasty picture with five of them on one stem. So let's just be paying attention to weevils. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate everybody joining me today. Again, Jeff Jackson signing off here from Cropland by Winfield United. Everybody have a great day.